be fine and like you know what I'm saying like you don't look right and you you know all this stuff but it's more of a, a psychological abuse yeah yeah but but it, but it was the same the reason that I was in that relationship and allowed myself to stay in it was the exact same reason why abused women are in the situation they're in right. and it does get to a point where you're like this person's going to kill me you know what I'm saying I really was I really was questioning in my mind is this woman going to kill me you know what I mean and I ultimately left. I got the courage because I was my music started doing well. The touring I, I was out on tour and um you know, I kind of ended up almost buying my way out. Somebody offered me a commercial to do it to do a song for a commercial which I normally would never do. But they offered me like a, a, a more money than I'd ever got for anything before. And so I did it and I took that check and just gave it to her. You know what I mean? And I was like, I'm leaving. You have the, and and that's when I left is when it actually got violent. But but ultimately like the thing that made me leave was for my son. Like I didn't want my son growing up in this environment. You know what I mean? So I left and and, and ended up me and him both got restraining orders against her. And um I got full permanent uh sole uh physical and legal custody. Um I I waived um I waived um uh child support, you know what I mean? I didn't want her to have to I didn't want her to be responsible to me in any kind of way. I just wanted to a clean break and to move on and create a new environment for my son. And we ended up getting um court ordered supervised visitation, which for us works really good, but you have to be you have to really be on top of what facility you're at because different facilities have different definition of, of what supervising is. You know what I mean? Because there are places where there'll be one social worker in a room with like five families and they're not really watching what's going on. They physically can't. We go to one now that's really expensive for me. And if I wasn't doing this touring, I don't know if I'd be able to afford it. So, I, so maybe this option isn't available to everybody. But, um, you know, now they're one-on-one -on -one with a social worker. If I want to, I can request notes of everything that was discussed. They monitor the... So now my son sees his mom once a week when she shows up, you know. But he sees her once a week, and they... Um, the, the, the situation dictates that it's just positive. It's not real substantive. Like, they don't really... You know, she's not parenting him, but they hang out and it's positive, fun time for both of them. Like all of his rules about you're not allowed to drink soda in the morning and, you know, he, we don't even drink soda at our house. You know what I mean? But like when you're with your mom, you get to eat all the junk food you want. Just hang out because it's a positive thing for him. And he gets to just get a whole bunch of hugs and kisses. And eventually, he, you know, he's nine now and he came to me and he was like, I need to know why I'm not allowed to hang out with my mom. Because at first it was always like your mom doesn't, when he was three years old, right. your mom doesn't feel good right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and then so now how, now as how it got older and now, older, now, now well, after a while I had to just be real and be like, you know, your mom did some scary things. You know what I mean? And I just don't want you to ever be around anything scary. So when we go to this place, we know that it's just happy. I want you to, I don't want to keep you away from your mom. I want you guys to still love each other and I want you to always, you know. And, um, I, I told him, you know, initially, when he was six, seven, eight years old, I don't, I don't think it would be happy for you to hear about that stuff. And as long as that stuff doesn't happen around you, I don't think you need to really know it. But she started saying, I wish I could hang out with you outside of this place. And so he came to me and he was like, I really need to know what happened. And I told him all of it, you know what I mean? The, and, you know... I, just in a really honest way. Now I didn't. I didn't exaggerate it. I thought I was. I was trying to be really magnanimous about not indulging or or, or going overboard or overdosing on. Because you know, as soon as I left, and as soon as she wasn't a threat to me or him anymore, all of my bad feelings for her went out the window. It, it, like it. I actually, for my son's sake, want her to do well, which is why I didn't ask for child support. Because I want her to be, if she can ever get on her feet, to do that. Right. Like I, I would, I would prefer to her for her to be in a good place, all the way around, because it'd be better for my son. Um, but so that that actually, um, you know, it it there's still challenges here and there, but for the most part, I had a pretty good experience in court. I didn't get a lawyer. 
she was able to actually actually you know what's interesting when i got my when i got my um and i never talk about this stuff but only because of the people that are going through this right. am, am i saying these things so like you know hopefully you know hoping you know, for our listeners out there, we hope that it reaches some of them. And well, that and, and, and that if this and that if this isn't part of your life, I'm telling my my personal business that I don't put in my songs right now, just because I know that there's people that go through it, um, and that you can get out of that. But interestingly enough, we were at the mosque and like we're both Muslim, so before the cameras on, we're just kind of having some some Muslim time together. <laughs> but like, I was at the mosque and and she came to the mosque to try to embarrass me into giving her money. And I just, I'm not a, I'm not easily embarrassed. Like I just generally, genuinely learned a long time not to care what people think right. about me. And, um, you know, she really spent a lot of time trying to tell people how terrible I was. And I just kind of sat back and let it happen. I figured that anybody that believed her, it gave me an opportunity to see how connected I really was with people. Because anybody that would believe that about me, I knew that we didn't really know each other. You know what I mean? And a lot of the people have come back and apologized, and you know what I mean. So it was really kind of an interesting thing to go through. And um, there's other songs on that album that, uh, or the, the next album is called Undisputed Truth, and it's it's about that period of me leaving her and being homeless with my son, and basically having nothing. So I left her with even all the the material possessions that I had built that till that point, and um, a complete clean break, and you know was homeless with my son. Not, you know, I had friends I could sleep on their floor and stuff like that, but we didn't have a place, you know what I mean? Like, we never had to sleep outside, thank God. Like, my friends are just too great to me to, to let us get to that point. But interestingly enough, when I got my... Um, I didn't have a lawyer through my, my divorce, but when I, when I applied for the... She came to the mosque and punched me at the mosque, in front of everybody. She punched you? At the, at the masjid. Now, let me just say real quick to people out there, with, see, oftentimes with domestic violence, they think that it's... A woman getting beat by a man. Yeah. They don't understand that it had. I mean, it does happen to men as well. Like there was a most recent statistic that said that every 38 seconds, a man is abused by his partner. Mm. So that's why I, I think it's great that you know you're talking about this. So hopefully, people realize that so in order to move forward in this cause, we have to discuss it as a whole. I can see that. I can see that. It's a. It's a little bit different, with uh, in my mind. Just because, in my situation, I'll say that. Right. I'll just stick to my situation. I'm not going to um, pretend to know what other people's situation are. But I'm, you know, I'm like 6'2", 250. You, you can push your own way. You're, 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 you're. My, my first wife was 5 feet tall. You know what I mean? Or like 5'2", right. or something like that. She was a very small person. Right. Um, and it's interesting because she came, she came from a climate of domestic violence. You know what I mean? And her mother used to, me and her mother are very close. A after my wife and I got divorced, mm -hmm. we became very close. And she used to tell me all the time, she's not going to listen to you unless you hit her. Like, that's, that's, she doesn't react to anything. Yeah, she doesn't react to anything but being hit. So you, you don't need to hit her or leave her. She told me this every time we saw each other, every time we hung out. You get, I, I hate to say this about my baby, but you're going to have to hit her or leave her. And eventually I left because I wasn't going to, you know what I mean? Right. But that was true. Yeah. She, like, she wasn't going to respond to me. Just talking it out, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, so, um, but yeah, she ended up doing that at the mosque. And the, the, the minister or the imam was actually like, you need to get the legal system involved in this, no matter how much. Because I just, my, my experiences with the police in particular are so negative. I've, I've never really, I've had one good uh, interaction with a cop in my life. Everything else has been really negative. And so I, I just didn't want to get him involved at all. But he was like, for your son, you need to go report what happened. You need to get a restraining order. You know what I mean? All these things. So when I did that, when it's a domestic view, abuse case, <coughs> I got automatically referred to a, a woman's shelter. Really? And so these women just showed up at my trial really? to support me. Okay. You know what I mean? And they work. They, they generally represent women. And I think because my name is Ali, they thought it was Ali. Ali, right. And so they showed up thinking that I was going to be a mom who got hit by her partner. Mm -hmm. And... Is he the six foot two guy? Yeah. And they're like, are you Ali? And I'm like, it's actually Ali. And they were like, wow. <laughs> but they read the story and they're just, they were like, we're going to fight for you. That's we're going right. to help you. You know what I mean? That's right. And it ended up really just being a lot of, you know, moral support. Mm -hmm. And, um... But I went through the whole trial, the whole um, divorce without a, an attorney. My wife got an attorney, um, and 
I just went in there and was brutally honest about everything and really kept my son's uh, well-being first in my mind. And I did, I, I, that was one time where my faith really helped me. Like,